everybody, and hello again for my week number 11. This is madness, week number 11 of my live cooking. Um, this is a, a pretty cool dish. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, if you guys didn't see my post before or my story, you're going to want a, a little pan of um, boiling water on, because we're going to make like we did the pesto uh, a couple of weeks back, we make the basil, so we're going to need to blanch it. So, pan of water on first off, get that boiling, boil the kettle if you need to, and uh, go from there. So this week I wanted to sort of do something slightly different from all the Asian food that I've been doing and do a dish that um, we do at my work. Um, with the hotel that I work for we, we change our menu daily and which is fantastic because you get to be creative in such an incredible way. But sometimes you get those sort of mental blocks like everybody else does and this dish is one of those dishes that we think, oh, we can do that. It's nice. It's a good hearty one. It's lovely for the summer. Sort of in this weather. I don't know where you guys are in the country, but for us it's been raining today, which I'm not going to say is bad for the garden, but anyway. So this is basically uh, going to be a pan fried uh, sea bream. Obviously if you're vegetarian, you're going to use halloumi. If you don't like fish, you're going to use chicken breast. So I'm going to cook chicken breast. I have my niece here for uh, a couple of weeks at the moment. She's fussy and doesn't like fish, so I'm going to do a piece of chicken breast. And then um, we're going to have uh, celeriac, um, which I've just already started peeling, but I'm, we'll show you guys how to peel it roughly in a bit. Uh, the carrots, the butternut squash, I couldn't get any celery, so I'm using courgette instead, but that's not a problem. Then we've got the usual ingredients for pesto, basil, garlic, parmesan, pine nuts, olive oil. Um, the good thing, why, why, another reason why I chose this dish is it's one of those dishes that you can actually prepare a lot in advance. Uh, if you've got friends over for dinner, having a dinner party, whatever, and uh, you want to do a nice main course with chicken, this dish is great because you can make your pesto the day before, you can cut and cook your veg uh, the day before, and then all you have to do on the day is just basically warm it all together and just cook a piece of chicken. I mean, perfect. Or more ideas that you've got for your repertoire of, uh, of, uh, of dishes for you guys to enjoy. So, as usual, please um, fire any questions away. I've got the media team on the case and they will uh, fire me some questions. That'll be grand. Everyone's commenting best. on your chef whites today. I've got to be honest, I haven't worn this for probably three months and um, it feels great. <laughs> really feels good. <laughs> so, um, what we're going to do first, guys, is we're going to make the pesto. Oh, I'll tell you one more thing. If you're using the sea bream or chicken breast, if you've got a tea towel, yeah, put it down like this, skin side down. So I'm using the, I've got the chicken here, and I've got the fish there, and I'll just put it skin side down on a dry tea towel, or a uh, dishcloth even, whatever you've got. And the reason for this is it's going to dry the skin out, it's going to get crispier a lot easier. So that's the first thing the top tip. So, um, you'll also need, for in a bit, uh, another saucepan of uh, boiling salted water. If you want to chuck a vegetable stock cube in there or a chicken stock cube in there, by all means, you're only going to give it more flavour, which is delicious. So we can put another one of those on. Because basically what we're going to do, we're going to cut all these vegetables, we're going to cook them uh, in the boiling liquid, and then we're going to put them into a, a little dish to cool down gently while we do our little bits of pots. Alright? My wife is laughing. <laughs> I can't think why. <laughs> Doesn't matter, it probably does. <laughs> well, um, apparently our dog was watching today. Oh, that? <laughs> Wolfie boy and friends. Oh, I see, I see. All oh, right, somebody logged into that cat. Oh, very good. That's something to see. Oh. Right, okay, back to the matter of hand. So, uh, a little pan of boiling water. You're also gonna need a little frying pan as well. We're gonna toast the pine nuts. So we're gonna get that done. So like I did with the cashew nuts for the red miso pesto, we're going to do the same with that. Um, and then I've got boiling water. You're going to need a bowl of uh, water, like we did, so we can basically uh, cook the basil very quickly, for a few seconds, take it out, put it straight into cold water, stop the cooking process. Um, you don't want um, you don't want the leaves, uh, the, the leaves. You don't want the stalk. So all of my basil is just the leaves. Don't throw them away because they're beautiful. If you get some nice tomatoes, you can just roughly chop them and put them straight over a tomato salad with a bit of salt and sugar. Is that the stems you Yeah, yeah. So, boiling water, a little frying pan, go here. 
Then I'm going to put my pine nuts in there. If no you pressure. couldn't get pine nuts, can you use another nut? Yeah, you can use any nuts you want really. If you, if you don't like pine nuts, you can cashew nuts, almonds, macadamia nuts, whatever you want. It's completely up to you. So first things first, basil in the boiling water. And like I said, this is not going to take very long at all. Okay, it's such a soft, soft herb. But as soon as it goes a nice sort of darker colour, it's ready to rock and roll. Okay, and that's it. Done. That's going to go in the cold water there. And you want to do this as quickly as you can so that it stops the cooking and keeps that vibrant green. Okay, if you've got ice, even better, but it's not essential. Okay. We used our rice. Yeah, we used our rice for gin and tonics probably. And rum. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, don't make it out, it's just me and mum. Okay, you are gonna need that saucepan back you just used, but just let it go dry in the air and that's fine. Okay, so don't worry too much. So, uh, cash toasted pine nuts are on. If you've got that pan of water or chicken stock or veg stock, whatever you've got, get that on the flame, that's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to take this basil out here now because it's nice and cold. And you can make, you know, pestos in all sorts of flavours if you wanted to. If you wanted to use uh, a different herb, you can, like we did the other week, we used actually spinach, but um, you can use anything, you know, you can make, uh, you can make rocket pesto, watercress pesto, uh, and do exactly the same thing. Always, always do exactly the same thing, same sort of ingredients and just to follow the same principle. Saffron Airy Alcock says, hi, afternoon chef. Good afternoon, hope you're well, thank you very much for joining, very kind of you. Right. Okay. So, pine nuts, there we are. We're just starting to get some colour on them. That's what we want. Okay, that's lovely. They smell good. Okay, so we've got that there. We've got the garlic, parmesan, which I, I pre-grated. So you can get that grated and done. Okay. Now, I said I was cooking a piece of chicken for my fussy niece. So I'm gonna put, if you put it, if you're cooking chicken, Probably might buy any an idea to put uh, put your oven on 180. If you're cooking fish, you're not going to need to. If you're cooking looming, probably won't need to as well. All right, lovely. Mad's times thought we were going to put rum in it, and she got excited. <laughs> Here we all. So just to recap, guys. So you blanch your basil. Keep that pan. You've had the basil water in there. Just get rid of the basil. You're going to need that for later, which I'll explain. You want another pan of boiling water. Uh, either keep it with a vegetable top cube to give more flavour or a chicken stock cube, whatever you wouldn't want. I um, broke down a chicken earlier for, for Fern, my niece, and I made a chicken stock, so because I'm a chef, I, that's what I do. Okay, and I'm gonna put those pine nuts in our toast, I'm gonna pop them in there. Now, it is as well, if I was, if I was at work, I would do this slightly more, slightly differently, I would, I would wait till everything's cold, and then I would blend. I would blend it all. But I'm not going to do that today because we're pretty much going to, going to make it so. Whereas for me, I would make it and then I'd be serving later in the evening. So we're not going to do that. So what we'll do? We'll go down to the vegetables next. So your celeriac, um, I think it's a vegetable that's really underrated. People look at it and think, "Wow, what is this ugly softball?" And I've got to say, I think it's absolutely delicious. Um, it sometimes. Um, on the bottom they, they can be very rooty, very muddy. So if you've got so all I've done is I basically just topped and tailed it. Okay, and then with a knife or a peeler, you can just basically peel all the way down at that, or you can literally cut the stem off. Now uh, the skin off. I actually use it as part of my chicken stock, so that's uh, no problem at all. But it's up to you. So I'm just gonna put my chicken breast on to cook for my niece. Now I'm obviously salt and pepper. Right, there we go. Again, I always put that. Oh, splendid. Put that pot. Right. 
So, skin side down, yeah. Always skin side down, you want to get that skin nice and crispy. So, what we're going to do, we're top of this layer at first, and we're going to basically we're going to square it off, okay? Okay, don't waste those, nothing wrong with them. You can use them in soups, you can make a curious soup with that. So, you've got a nice squared off scenario, and you want to cut them to nice thick wedges like that. Okay? Don't worry about that little bit in the middle, it's not going to matter. I'm basically going to cut them into, into sort of big dices. So, once you've got it like that, you're then going to cut them into big sticks. Then sticks and dices. There you go, do the same with the other one. You might be saying this is quite wasteful, but to be honest, it's so nice. This vegetable, it can be used for so many other things. Anyway, if you didn't, you use these very no extravagant. And this at work, we use these and we use every part of it. We use we wash the skins and use it for stocks. We use this for trimmings for soup and these bits to go for the garnish. So there we go, a diced uh, celeriac. Carrots, I'm going to cut in half and then half again. Okay. Lovely. Put that over. Can you get me a coffee from there? Uh, from there. Uh, Cut the other one. No, this one I didn't want to do it. Got any trimmings in there? They can go in that little pot. Vegetable soup. Beautiful. Another one, Clark. Yeah. Now, I've got, a, I've got a wonderful message earlier saying about how to do the butternut squash. So all I've done, my butternut squash is about this big. I've just peeled it all and I've cut it just above where the seeds would be. So if you imagine that's under there like that. I've just taken that, I've cut the seeds out and I've got that little piece there. So all I'm going to do is same again, square it off. More veg soup. And remember, this is so important, is people push down an island, it's not the way to do Let the knife do the work, okay? Thanks, Diana, so hello. Hello, Anna. Then we're going to have veg soup this week. Could you use both of those as a veg soup together or two separate soups? Sorry? Two separate soups for the squash and the... You could do. I mean, I, I've got more celeriac there than anything else. But you could make um, celeriac soup or, uh, or a vegetable soup. It's completely up to you. If you're cooking the chicken, you can get that side. I'm going to put mine in the oven now. I'm going to take too long. Out you go. There's no chicken for you, dog. Okay. And then the bottoms of the squash, I'm just going to do the same thing. Okay. By now, your boiling stock, water, whatever you want, should be up to temperature and boiling. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to basically cook these. They're just cooked one at a time. Okay. And the reason we do this, because there's always a reason why I do everything, 
okay, is because the carrot is going to take different time to your celery, to your celeriac, to your squash. So you cook them all separately. That's what I think, Kiba. He's in a fast mood today. He is. Well, that's what happens. Okay. And like I said, what you can do is you can basically just use the, you can make this in advance and basically blanch all this on the day before you need it and that's fine. If you're using celery, take the big sticks. I would peel them, but it's completely up to you. Alternatively, you could just cut them in half lengthways and cut them so you've got a similar sort of squarish shape. All right? uh, what do you mean by peel the celery? Peel the celery. It, it, uh, <laughs> it hasn't got skin. It, it, well, there's there's a fibrous outside of the of the celery, which um, is isn't. It can be a bit tough when it gets cooked. Plus, if it's depending on the age of the celery, uh, if it's if it's very young, it's fine. But if it's if it's if you're using the centre parts, I wouldn't peel it. If you're using the outside ones, they're a bit older and they're a bit tougher. So I would I would usually peel them. Like okay. you would a normal like carrot or something. Yeah. Okay. But you don't have to. Okay, but I haven't got a celery, so I'm using courgettes instead. Okay, and then, there we go. Right, so that's cooking away nicely, and then while they're cooking, we're going to make our pesto. So you see, actually, I'm letting things cool down for the pesto to make it slightly easier. Okay, that's going to go in there. Becky asks if you put any vegetable already as she got behind chopping. Just the carrots, just, just the carrots, because they're going to take the, the longest. Uh, pop the carrots in there. To yeah. Just the carrots. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you don't have to square it off. I mean, I'm a chef, it's, it's, it's what, what I do. Um, you, can, you can just, I haven't bothered squaring the courgettes off because I kind of want a slightly different shape, but it's up to you. But for, for celeriac, I always square them off. It's sort of force of habit. So, what we've got now, so we're going to make the pesto next. So um, we're going to, as I'm making the pesto, I'm going to slowly check the veg, remove it out from the, uh, from the, from the water. Now, one, I think I need it from over here. There you are. Yeah, you did, I did this dish as well because I wanted some, some utensils I haven't used for ages. So, what we're going to do with the pesto, so you need a food processor um, for this, obviously, like a Nutribullet or a Nutri-Ninja or Hadji mix it's absolutely fine. So, you're going to take that basil, you're just going to roughly chop it up, and the reason to do this is just to make it a little bit easier on the machine, okay? How do you cut the celery? Mandy Flatterboy wants to know. Um, to take... Just cut them into, into smallish sort of dices, uh, Mandy, about the same size of your carrots or for you, for you guys. And peel it if you want to, you don't have to. But I would, when you've got like the nice U shape of the celery, cut straight down the center of the U, so you've got two pieces, and then just cut it like that uh, into little, little, so you've got two little sticks, then you can cut it down. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, garlic goes in. Pine nuts go in to the uh, food processor. I have got a very itchy nose today and it's driving me mad. Hay fever's bad this week. Yeah, no. Okay. Pine down in. Not really use it all because it's quite a lot there. Olive oil. Good, good, good measure of that magic okay it's gonna go on food processor Earlier I posted about some herbs that I got from a company called Nurturing in Norfolk, 
And uh, this basil came from there, and I must say, it's absolutely stunning. I peeled it, it was delicious. <laughs> Um, you, you, I'm putting about 50 mils at the beginning just to see it, it's a bit by eye. You want to make it so it's a bit of a saucy consistency, so you might need to add more. That's why on the recipe I didn't put an amount because it sort of slightly varies. So a good glug, and if you if it's not blending like mine is at the moment, you need a bit more, a little more moisture, a little more olive oil. what's in there again please yes of course so in here i've got the blanched basil the cooked basil which is cold parmesan garlic toasted pine nuts and a lot of olive oil my waistline it's it's what is it saturated fat it's good fat it's good fat so yeah <laughs> Season it, I from the season, so you can only get more flavour. Right. I'm gonna leave that in that little vessel there. So by now, hopefully, your first lot of veg should be on the carrots. I'm gonna check these, and they don't want to be sm smushy, they want to be just cooked. Okay, and the reason for that is because I'm gonna take these out. I'll put them in a little dish and I'm going to cook. I'm going to basically warm these up later. Now, the good thing is if you're using, if you're not, if you're using a veg stock cube or you're using chicken stock cube, whatever you're using in this liquid, it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with this veg, this, this liquid. You can use this as your stock to make a soup. You know, most people just use water. We at work who always use chicken stock or vegetable stock. You can use that as a basic soup, it's delicious, you know. I'm gonna pop the celery in uh, next. A celeriac. Celeriac in next. If you're only using celeriac and celery, would you put them in together? No, no, I'd always put them separately. Still separately. So they're always gonna take slightly different amounts of time. Okay. Oh, that pond is about to smell really nice. I'm gonna take that out so you guys can see. Again, this makes quite a nice amount of parmesan. I'm not going to need all of this, so again, you can use it up for another dish. Uh, if you're vegetarian, uh, you want to find yourself, uh, use some sort of different vegetarian cheese uh, if you don't want to use parmesan, because uh, parmesan is technically not vegetarian. Um, so you can, you can either omit it completely, make it vegan, or uh, you can use a different cheese. But um, I'm trying to think, I think uh, a lovely lady suggested her cheese, and I can't remember what she said. Nope, it's gone. Maybe Marie A.B., if she's online today, she'll be able to inform us uh, which, uh, which one it was. So, we're going to get started with cooking our fish. Like, if you, um, if you guys are using chicken, um, in a frying pan, skin side down, in the oven at 180 degrees. Give it, uh, give it plenty of, of time to make sure it's lovely and thoroughly cooked. Um, okay. Becky says her pesto's gone a little brown from the pine nuts. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It's 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 fine. It's absolutely fine. Fear not. Fear not. Okay. All right. Celeriac is cooking nice. After celeriac, we'll add the butternut squash and then the celery. Okay, so if you're doing the fish, so there's a couple of tricks to cooking fish, you know, you need a nice hot pan, okay, you're going to need a spatula of some sort, okay, I've got my metal one here, which, Ikea, yeah, okay, and like I said, I got these from, um, from Dorset, from Portland Shellfish, um, they do, Dorset Shellfish, Dorset Shellfish, who are based in Portland, based in Portland, there you go, um, and uh, they were great. They, um, if you uh, if you're down in the Bournemouth way, they have a lovely little stool. I say little, it was massive. 
They have a really good stall in uh, the village hall in Camford Cliffs. Um, so I ordered this sort of stuff on Wednesday. I went and picked it up from them on Thursday. So I'm going to put quite a generous amount of oil in this. Okay. And there is a reason because you want this to go. Now, I think a lot of people get a little bit afraid of cooking fish. Um, and I think it's important to remember that uh, 15 seconds is a lifetime to when you're cooking fish. Um, and with these kinds of fishes, you're gonna wanna cook it 90% of the way on the skin side. So you're always gonna put it skin side down. You're always gonna do a fish side, skin side down. Okay, I'm gonna check my next uh, vegetable. Longer. Okay. But yeah, always cooking the skin side down and you're gonna cook it 90% of the way. Yep, we're gonna season these up. Salt, pepper. And this, you know, like I said, you can do it with chicken. You could do it with a uh, fillet of sea bream, a fillet of salmon. Um, it would go quite well if you wanted to do it with lamb. It'd be absolutely stunning with that. It's, it's completely up to you. You know, you don't have to feel like it has to be chicken or sea bream. I just like the sea bream because one, it, it's a very thin fish, it takes no time at all to really cook. Okay, so it's gonna to wanna to get a good bit of heat in here for this. So, celeriac should be about there, so I'm gonna take that out. Okay, so celeriac's gonna come out. And then I'm gonna add the butternut squash. Like I said, if I was putting this in a, doing this the day before, I'd pop these in the fridge. Beautiful. Okay. Butternut squash is going to go in next. Okay. Over there. So I can over here. And a piece of paper. Right. So pan's getting nice and hot. Okay. Now, like I said a few weeks back, always put away from you. Now this is the part I think people get sometimes get quite afraid of, okay? It's really important. Fish like this is like any muscle, okay? As soon as you put this into hot oil, it's gonna curl up and you're gonna need your fingers to press down, okay? So fish in, okay? And you'll see it start to curl up straight away. When you use your fingers, you're gonna push it down, okay? Basically, it's gonna force that muscle and just keep that shape. Okay, and that's it. It's a bit scary. It's a bit scary, but the more you do it, the better. So here, so away from I'm putting it like that. That in, push down. I remember when I did a, a stage at the Hand and Flowers with the work experience, and you see the chefs there, and they had a, they had a double cooking rage front to back, and the, and the fish chef had to had to lean over, and in, so if you imagine it was a stove like this like a solid burner, you have to lean over and put it on the other side where the, where the other, where the, where the garner section was, where the lava section was. I thought, wow, and he's there, he, was, he, was, he probably served about 40, 50 portions of fish a night. If you're doing a halloumi, you can do that now too? Yeah, I would put, put the halloumi on as well. Um, okay. There you go. Any seasoning on the Absolutely, salt, pepper. Um, if you wanted to marinate it beforehand, like I said, if you were doing this in, in advance, um, you could always do some nice chopped uh, oregano, uh, a little bit of olive oil for keeping it clean with the pesto. I wouldn't use basil, and the reason I wouldn't use basil is because basil is a soft herb. The soft herbs, when you get put together with um, when you cook them, just they go brown and they burn. Whereas Hard herbs like rosemary and thyme and certainly oregano. Um, it's a little bit uh, firmer, it's a little bit nicer. A bit, uh, a bit better for you. So you'll see, let me show you these fish now. Take over the device. So you see here, there it is cooking, yeah? I'm gonna press it down, keep it down. By now it shouldn't move and you'll see, as you see this white starting to come up, that's it cooking. And basically when it comes, that comes all the way. I've only got this on a sort of, medium to low heat and it's just going to cook gently 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 okay 
as you can see that Lynn is gobbler. Lynette Gobbler? Lynette Gobbler? Lynette's here! They're from oh, the UK. Lovely. They're in the UK now. Yes! I'm so glad you're back, Lynette. I was wondering, I was actually thinking about yesterday, wondering if you're back in the UK. I'm so glad. I get to work. Right. Don't you all want to be at work? Yeah, we all do. We're getting a bit frantic here. Right. Okay. Next one that I need. Hey. Fish on. So now the trick is, is is try not to scrape it and do this because that's part of, part of the problem where sometimes people cook fish and the skin rips or shreds or whatever. It's because you just got to let it be. You know, it will because of the oil it will just eventually just come off. Okay, you can very gently ease it off there, but it's not quite there, so I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. Okay. Now, uh, so, we should have our veggies slow and cooked now. We've got our pesto made, fish or chicken is on. Uh, chicken probably cooked now, so I'm going to turn that off. I don't want that to overcook for furnage. Do I turn? She nods, she shakes her head. Lovely. Okay, beautiful. Right, I'm going to do any old squash now. Yep, nearly there. Very nearly cooked. Just going to take out. Now, you, you can add other ingredients to this if you wanted to. If you wanted to put diced potato in, you can. Um, you could put, um, I would kind of avoid green veg. Best you can, you want these sort of rooty veg really. Uh, but squash, celeriac, celery, all lovely dishes, carrots. You know, if you're doing, you can use Chantelet carrots if you prefer them. Uh, I'm gonna use these ones. Right, courgette in that water now. And that's it, right. What do we do with the old fisherini? There you are, so. Trying to find, ideally you want a best non-stick pan if you can have. Probably should have said that at the beginning. You can turn it in that old non-stick pan. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and as soon as it's released from the bottom, You can uh, you can flip it over. This one's not going to look as nice. This one. I've got that feeling. Yeah, this can be my one. Um, what do you do with the celery again? Well, when we cook it, we'll prep it. Are we? I think cooking it. Yeah. So that so it should be now. You should be able to get the last vegetable in the celery in. That should be ideal. Can I have the nice one? Yes. <laughs> I'll suffer with the mulch it is. Yeah, because as soon as you go back to work, I'm not going to have this food anymore. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it's true. So, nearly there for painting up now, guys. So, what I'm going to do, now that I've flipped the fish over, that looks an absolute <laughs> atrocious. Um, I'll buy you a new can. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to leave that off. Okay, and I know you know I said to you earlier you need that other saucepan. You're gonna need that now. Okay. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just take this off. Put it onto a plate. Don't 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 look at these. <laughs> these are awful. I've seen worse. Yeah. I haven't cooked like this since I've been coming. Emotion. Yeah. <laughs> chef, don't be watching this. <laughs> yeah, my chef, yeah, not me. Anyway. I'll look at the nice one. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is, uh, with our other saucepan, okay, we're going to 
Put, uh, we're going to put that onto the heat. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to add this veg into that, into that other bowl. I'm going to chop the pesto in and we're ready to serve. Um, Dan Fulan says, will you be doing a cook-off with all the leftover bits he's accumulated over the last few weeks? If, if you still have bits from the last few weeks, mate, it's not, you know, that just compost now, mate, that's nothing else. <laughs> um, no, I'm not. <laughs> so, oh yeah. If he means the seasonings, you know, the... Oh yeah, I mean, we could always, I mean, those things, the good things like that, you can keep, uh, keep for ages, they're not going to go off. So, and, you like know, soy sauce and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, for anything like uh, Jimsy Doodar and uh, Eddie Cleland, Eddie Cleland, I don't think he's made anything less than two Donburys a week since I made it. And that was our second one. So, uh, so yeah, always use it up. Right, so, here we are, guys. We're nearly there. Nearly there. So, that's all the veg now. It's got the carrots, celeriac, uh, I'm using courgette, but you guys have celery, and butternut squash. So, that's all there. I'm going to basically put all that into the saucepan. Okay. Give it a little mix. And then the pesto is going to go straight in there. Yeah, uh, Jimsy Duda says there's only one Dunbury today, this week. Not today, this week. <laughs> So in that sauce, is it just the vegetables and the... Just the vegetables and pesto. No stock, nothing? No, not at the minute. I didn't think it needed it, but it might do. Don't forget your seasoning, ladies and gents. Okay. Put this as... Make this as pesto -y as you want, okay? It really, it won't, it's whatever you want. If you want to make it slightly more saucy, you can put just a splash of that stock that you had. It's up to you. Okay. Did you hear me that uh, Jimsy Doodah's only had one Dunbury this week? Disgraceful. Uh, is it in the okay, so here we are, guys. This is it. Pesto minestrone, butchered brick and sea bream. <laughs> one looks nice. Or chicken. And basically, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to splash it right in the centre. Okay. Loads of veg here. Re the reason I don't put potato in this is because I think it's hearty enough. You know, you've got all that richness from the basil and the parmesan. Okay. Uh, saffron uh, something something yeah. says that her boyfriend just flipped the fish and it's perfect. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Spending too much time making Donburys and Ramens, obviously. Love it. Okay. That's definitely a good five a day there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, my love, that's yours. Thank you. It's not on my favourite plate. I know. I nearly did, but that one doesn't look as nice with the veg. Fair enough. Okay. I'm going to just cut Fern's chicken.
I will post the ingredients and the method on the same day and then the video will be up shortly after like a couple of days and then you guys can make it okay um, just because I don't know what, what, what was happening but until then we'll see what happens so thank you very much guys Next we're going to go back to the Asian roots and we're going to do a chicken and egg gyudon? Oh, yakidon. Yakidon. Oh, yakidon. Oh, yakidon, sorry. Um, we're going to get one of those guys today and they're really simple chicken thighs and, um, and just some sort of Asian flavors again. So, yeah. Alright guys, well take care. Thank you very much. See you next week and enjoy the food. Post your pictures. Let me see what it looks like. That'll be grand. Take care. Bye.